this part of the activity, I'd like to get a little more specific about the definitions. So here for the first time we introduce the term chiral. So the term chiral refers to a property of an object. We might say that molecule A is chiral, and if we do, we're saying it's not identical to its mirror image. Of course, chiral comes from the Greek word care, which signifies hand. Of course, your hands are chiral because your right hand, in a sense, is a mirror image of your left hand, yet the two are not superposable. Enantiomers, as we've mentioned before, are stereoisomers that are non-identical or non-superposable mirror images. And when we say enantiomers, this always implies a relationship between two objects. Diastereomers refer to a pair of stereoisomers that are not enantiomers. So diastereomers can occur in a range of ways, whereas enantiomers are quite specific. They have to be mirror images that are not identical. And we've already seen a few examples of diastereomers, those associated with ring structures and those associated with carbon-carbon double bonds. Here we also define the term racemic mixture. This, of course, is a one-to-one -one mixture of a pair of enantiomers. As you're going to see, the result of many chemical reactions results in a racemic mixture. That is, both enantiomers are formed. And so, because this happens so often, it's important to have a term. So now that we've reviewed these definitions, I'm going to ask you to look at the key question number seven, where we start to look at, well, what's the relationship between the structures that are drawn here? So in the first case, you're asked for what is the relationship between molecules A and B? Note that they have the exact same molecular formula. They have the exact same atom connectivity. So this would be 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane, and they're both trans. So they seem almost identical. But one of the things that you probably can notice in terms of how they're drawn is that indeed they're mirror images. And if you take molecule B and if you were to flip it over a whole 180 degrees, and try to superpose it on molecule A, you would see that it wouldn't superpose. Because if we were to flip this molecule B over, the methyl group that's going away from us would be coming out, and the methyl group that's coming out at us would be going back. So these structures are not superposable. And therefore, in terms of well, what's the relationship, I would say that these guys are enantiomers. Now one of the things that you're going to see is that if you've established that a pair of structures are enantiomers, there's not like a third molecule that can fit in there. Enantiomers always refers to a pair of molecules. So then you're asked, well, what's the relationship between B and C? And maybe to highlight this, I'm going to change my pen color. So we're thinking, well, what's the relationship between these two? And by the way, this double-headed arrow, I'm not implying resonance forms. I'm just asking, well, what's the relationship between the two? They have the same molecular formula. They have the same attachment of atoms. They have that same name, 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. One, as you can see, is a cis, and the other is a trans. They're definitely not mirror images. And so if they're not enantiomers, but they are stereoisomers, well, then the only thing that's left is diastereomer. So these are examples of diastereomers. Now, it's possible for one molecule to have more than one diastereomer. So again, enantiomers are always pairs, but molecule C can have another diastereomer. And as you might imagine, you're asked for what is the relationship between A and C. Well, the relationship between A and C, they are also diastereomers. Before we go on, we might be wondering, well, is it possible for molecule C to have an enantiomer? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the mirror image of molecule C. And the mirror image would look something like this. So the structure that I've just drawn, and perhaps I could label it as D for now, it has the same atom connectivity, it has the same molecular formula, and it is the mirror image. But if you take this molecule and if you were to rotate it, in this case, along the same plane, 180 degrees, I think you could see that you can completely superpose it. So these structures are actually identical. And if they're identical, well, then they can't be enantiomers.
In this case, there isn't a fourth molecule. As a last feature of this video, I'd like to review this chart as it ties together many of the ideas that were introduced in this chem activity and allows you to see visually the relationship between the different kinds of isomers. So you're given a number of different labels and descriptions and I ask you to do your best at filling in the details of this chart and then we'll go over it together. So starting from the top we have the word isomers and as it turns out we've seen that there are two major classes of isomers. We have the structural isomers and we have the stereoisomers. In terms of stereoisomers, we've seen that there are two kinds of stereoisomers. There are the diastereomers and there are the enantiomers. So here are the labels. Now let's add the descriptors. So first of all, isomers are different compounds that have the same molecular formula. But of course, there are a number of ways to have different compounds. So one way, of course, are the structural isomers, which are also known as the constitutional isomers. Another way, of course, are the stereoisomers, and these guys are also known as the configurational isomers. The structural isomers result because they have a different connectivity of atoms, although the same molecular formula. Therefore, they'll have a different name outside of the indication of stereoisomers. On the other side, however, stereoisomers will have the same atom connectivity, the same molecular formula, but somehow a different arrangement in space, either about a ring structure or about a double bond or in relation to a mirror image. Enantiomers have a very specific definition. They are stereoisomers that are non-superposable mirror images. And then finally, diastereomers are stereoisomers that are simply not enantiomers. And we saw that this can arise because of a carbon-carbon double bond. It can also arise because of lack of rotation about a ring structure. In our class live sessions, we'll review these concepts and do some examples to help reinforce these ideas.